Hello there. This is my IWA East Coast Masters of Pain. Not Mid-South, East Coast. There's also Deep South, I believe, and I think Texas as well. But this is East Coast. This is my probably my favourite, especially after seeing this show. Unlike many deathmatch tournaments, I often feel they become too um, convoluted. They try to do these completely ridiculous types of death matches on the undercard and really you don't need to so it's just really overkill and it, these guys feel like they need to go through every you know contraption they've set up and every triple sheet of glass or you know three sheets of glass or use every we weapon the fans bring but this tournament is refreshing much like the tournament before uh, the, the east coast masters of pain 2008. It is simple and it is beautiful in its simplicity. Now, I'm sure someone like Ichiban Prores would watch this and go, yeah, I don't know what you get. Oh, 50% or 60% for this match. Psychology, you know, selling, all this jazz. But someone like Kyle, who's who's who, who's not into deathmatch wrestling, and Kyle knows who Kyle is, and, and you will too, he... he he could watch this show, not being a deathmatch fan, and he could sit there and, and 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 get it. It's that type of show which would be a good gateway type of show for someone to watch, and it doesn't go over the top where it tries to disgust you or just outrage you. It's fun, f u n, fun. And that's what I liked about last year. This is what I like about this year's one. You know, uh, I'll go through the the matches. All right, round one, you had Man Madman Pondo. Uh, and there will be spoilers in this in case you don't want the spoilers so you can just stop watching now. Or at least when I get to round two, because that's when the spoilers will happen. You had Man, Ma Mad Man Pondo versus Wax in a Cage of Hell match. Now, there's nothing really too complicated this. They just created a kind of cage with light tubes. They don't... They use them liberally, but it's never never over the top. Um, uh, the, the match itself is fairly simple. Wax wasn't supposed to be there. Man Man Pondo is past his peak. But, you know, he could still do enough with Wax. And Wax it hasn't yet hit his peak. He's still getting there. As an opening match, I felt it was, it was average, but it was enough to really keep me interested enough to, for the next match. So I'd give it two and a quarter stars and say it's probably the worst. But that's not to say it's a bad match. It's, it's a good match. It's, it's entertaining. I enjoy it. But it's just not the best match on the show. Um, but it is... An opener, so you don't really need too much to, to for an opener. The second match is Supreme, who I'd never actually seen before, um, and I, so I was a bit curious. Whenever I see someone new, I'm like, yeah, I want to see his match versus Drake Young in a Pains of Glass match. This match was very simple. They didn't try to, to reinvent the wheel in the match. It was short. Mo mo like most of the matches in this, it was quite short, simple. They did a few spots. Um, they did some wrestling. Enjoyable. Two and a half stars. They did some spots through the Pains of Glass, as you would expect, as it's a pain of, Pains of Glass match. And Supreme actually surprised me by being a bit, you know, he's a short, fat dude with piercings in his face and, and a goatee. But he surprised me with, with, with his ability to do a suplex. Because usually you see these same types of guys in other deathmatch promotions, and really all they do is waddle around the ring and, and cut each other with pieces of glass on the forehead. But this guy would actually move in the ring, uh, which is something that you really need to do if you want to be a wrestler. Um, unlike some some people. The next match was Danny Havoc versus Sammy Callahan. Now, they had a match the next month. They, they were working an angle against each, uh, a program with each other, and they were working a match next month at the Cage of Death, which I will also be reviewing, Cage of Death 11. And so this match was a bed of nails and carpet strips match. This match was a bit longer than the past two matches, and it was fantastic. It was really good. Um, Danny Havoc... You know, he, I really didn't like him too much as a wrestler, but I liked him as a deathmatch wrestler um, for a long time. But as he's gone on, he's, it seems he's bulked up a little bit, and he's gotten better in the ring just as, as a wrestler. He doesn't seem as green as he used to be. Sammy, Sammy Callahan was just a wrestler, and he was always quite good at it. Um, he's got this new persona, which is a good persona, and I'll talk more about their feud in the CW Cage of Death 11 review. And you, you, for some reason, they just work really well together. There's just something that clicks and they just go at it and they just had my full attention the whole match um they didn't do anything too crazy there were some ch chair shots to the head which you know in in a, in a post-bamoir wrestling world you kind of question but 
these are consenting adults. They're not getting paid to do this. It's not like you can... If they're going to do this for the probably the amount of money they're getting paid, I think they do it for free anyway. It's something they enjoy doing. So, I mean, I would advise they didn't, but I'm not the boss of them. I'm not their parents. But, yeah, fun match. Three and three quarters for it because it, it was probably tied for best match of the night with another match. Um, the next match was a scaffolds and tables match between Yuko Miyamoto, famous from Big Japan, which... Uh, Ichiban Pro Wrestle X and Devin Moore. Um, this match, as you'd expect, had some scaffold dives. And and there was one table that wouldn't break much in an IWA Mid-South fashion. Um, went for uh, Devin Moore went for like a Mishinoku driver onto a table. Table wouldn't break. Put him on it, jumped on him onto the table, didn't break. Fuck. The match itself, I thought there was some good, some good wrestling, good exchanges, and ended with a really good really nice uh, moonsault off the top of the big scaffold onto Devon Moore through a table. Three and a half stars for that. It was a lot of fun. Um, and neither of them really bled or was in, seemed to be in too much pain, which is always good in a death match because you don't want to see them bleeding profusely after the first match all the time because you want them to have something still left in their engine when they get to the next round. Round two, cut off now for spoilers, uh, if you don't want to see the spoilers. In a fans bring the weapons match, we saw Madman Pondo versus Drake Younger. There was thumbtack titties. Um, there was a woman with uh, IWA, I believe, or, or something on her boobs in thumbtacks on her shirt. Drake Younger got shoved into them, and he probably held his face in there longer than he needed to. Um, <laughs> but there was also some really original things, like somebody brought an IWA made, uh, you know, kind of sculpture out of light tubes, or not like anything elaborate or anything, but it was just quite interesting to see. There was a baby with thumbtacks on it. There was this thing that spun like a fan with light tubes on it, and which which led to the finish of the match. The match itself, short, quite enjoyable. Um, wasn't the best match, but three stars for it, because I, I, I got into it. I, I thought it was really fun, um, much like a lot of the other matches. Next match was a light tubes and ceiling swings. Yes, light tubes and ceiling swings. They had ropes hanging down from the ceiling because it was done in a gym. I will just say now that the production values, I didn't think we were as good as the year before, but that won't really take away because the crowd was really hot. That, they, there were swings. They could grab onto them and swing into each other. And this match was uh, Devin Moore, as I said, really like his work recently. Yuki, Yuko Miyamoto from Big Japan. He's just a great worker and he has been for a long time. You put them in the ring together, they worked really well together. And there was one thing that I really think that's worth mentioning is in the ceiling swings and light tubes, there was a contraption built where if you went through the light tubes and hit this thing, it was like a a trap. You, you went through the light tubes and then a thing would come down like a, an, a like a trap type thing and it would go over you and it would have light tubes. I think they were supposed to break, but... Um, Yuko Miyamoto swung off the roof uh, ceiling swing, holding onto it like a monkey, kicked Devin Moore, uh, not Devin Moore, um, Danny Havoc, went through the thing, trap came down, then he hit him with his signature double knees. Fantastic. It looked fantastic. Everything they did just worked really well together. And this is the other match that I would say tied for match of the night in three and three quarter stars. Once again, short but sweet. Then we had the main event, which is Yuko Miyamoto versus... Uh, Drake Younger, Big Japan Deathmatch Champion, or the main champion from Big Japan, versus Drake Younger, the main champion from CCW. I didn't think I'd see this, and I guess it's because it happened in IWA East Coast that it happened. Uh, new management with DJ Hyde and CCW probably, you know, helped, or well, maybe not, didn't interfere with that. Um, the match itself, it went longer than a lot of the matches. Um, it was a no roped barbed wire and light tube bundles match. That would usually be an opening match, opening round match in the CZW Tournament of Death. Um, uh, yeah, no rope barbed wire, fun. No rope barbed wire, light tube bundles, and ladder death match. A lot of fun. I felt it didn't have the chemistry that a lot of the earlier matches had. It wasn't as fun as the earlier matches had, but it did have an epic feel to it, and it felt like a final. They really went at it, gave it a bit more time than the other matches had. And three and a half stars for it. It had a lot of crazy spots, you know, ladders, you know, suplexes off the ladders into light tubes, uh, off the, you know, uh, ring apron through these boards with, you know, barbed wire on it. Light tube spots are plenty. Barbed wire spots are plenty. Um, but yeah, one of the things I'll say about the show is I don't know if I mentioned it previously, but it's very short. It's only an hour and 45 minutes long, roughly. And 
that's why I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, because it's short, it's a lot of fun, and it's not too confronting. You can watch it very easily. I watched it in one sitting. I had to pause it once to get up to get a drink, and the whole time I was up to get a drink, I'm like, I can't wait to get back to see this. And I think a lot of what helps this uh, IWA East Coast's uh, Masters of Pain tournaments is they have one guy come from Big Japan, and he piques my interest in it, and he also helps the workers around him and will put on the best matches, much like Ryuji Ito did the year before and Thumbtack Jack to a lesser extent, but he put makes everyone look better than what they usually would look um, and, and just adds a lot to the tournament. 8 out of 10, um, but if still, if you're not a Deathmatch fan, you still might not like it, but as a Deathmatch fan, 8 out of 10.